Hi there, Jacob. This is Alexis Joy from Alexis Joy VIP Access. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I'm so happy to be speaking with you today. And first off, I just wanted to congratulate you on all the amazing success with your career. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Now, can you tell us what inspired you to become an actor? Well, actually, it was kind of a coincidence that I fell into it. You see, my dad used to be an actor, and I was wanting to interest him. And he happened to stop by at his agent. So um, one of his agents looked over at me, and she was like, who is this friend that you want to act? And I wanted to try acting, so I said, sure. And I was, and I tried it, and I was inspired by it from doing it because it was really, really fun. And it's also pretty fun to do it because, you know, I'm meeting new people, and it's really fun. That's incredible. What a fascinating story. And, by the way, you do an amazing job in all your acting. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. Now, you star in the upcoming Lifetime movie, Missing at 17, which premieres on October 19th. Can you tell us a little more about the movie and your role in it? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, Missing at 17 is about this girl named Candace White, who is played by Ava Kelt, and she goes missing at 17. <laughs> Um, and our parents are divorced, and she finds, so it's like, it's kind of a, a little bit of a sad life, but we still are happy and stuff, and she finds out that she's, uh, adopted, so she gets, she runs away and goes missing. <laughs> so, um, it's like this mad heart trying to find her, you know, all that stuff, and it gets a little scary at one point because she meets some people that, you know, aren't really that nice. And I play Andrew White, and I'm instrumental in helping find her because I'm like this computer whiz that, you know, can track her down and stuff, and the whole family is helping out. But it's a really fun film. I met, like, a lot of great people, and it was really awesome. That is magnificent. You're making me so excited to see it, and I can't wait to tune in on October 19th. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have a favorite scene that you filmed in Missing at 17 that you're looking forward for fans to see the most? Well, yes, I do, but I, I can't give it away mm -hmm. yet, but I'll give you a hint. It's Ooh. a scene like TV form <laughs> but, um, I, but I hope everyone watches it. <laughs> Definitely. Everybody just has to stay tuned so they can see that favorite part of yours, right? Excellent. Now, you also starred in HBO's highly acclaimed TV series, True Blood. What was it like for you playing Alexander Drew, a kid like Vampire? Well, as you can imagine, it made me pretty confident because, you know, um, I was wearing, uh, like, a really sharp suit and tie, and, you know, I had blood on my fingernails and red uh, makeup under the eyes and white makeup, too, to make me look pale and, of course, <laughs> but it was really, really cool. Well, and, um, it, it made me, like, really confident because, you know, I was, I played Alexander, like, I was the most powerful person on the authority. And he, was, he actually kind of was because even though he looks nine, he's, like, this very ancient vampire stuck in a kid's body, and he's, like, the oldest person, oldest vampire on the authority. And he also has a hidden agenda, so he was a little sneaky. Very wonderful, and we also had a lot of fun watching you. So. <laughs> now, yeah. well, thank you. You're welcome. Now, what was the atmosphere like working on set of HBO's True Blood? Well, you know, it was really awesome because everyone was great to me, and the sets were beautiful, and there was, like, this um, pond, and there was all these columns putting up the roof. It was, like, kind of like a uh, conference room in a mansion. <laughs> But, yeah, I was treated with so much respect, even being a kid, so it was really, really nice to be on set. That's great. It sounds like a wonderful working atmosphere. Now, you also have been yeah. casted as the voice of Gumball Waterson in Cartoon Network's The Amazing World of Gumball. For you, is the atmosphere of voicing a character much different from portraying a character on set in front of a camera? Well, yeah, yeah, because the voiceovers, I can be, you know, like, bigger than life, over-exaggerating it, that kind of a thing. Like, I can even contort my face sometimes because the right sounds and words out funny. And on camera, you can't do that. But, you know, there's a lot of freedom in voiceovers because on camera, it picks up everything. But in voiceover, it only picks up your voice. So, but it's really fun because Gummo talks really fast. So, you know, clarity is important and so is pitch tone and diction. So I have to get all those P's and C's out and stuff like that. And it's really fun because I can even do different voices as Gumball, you know, 
doing very cool. Now, you played the role of Billy in CBS's hit TV series, How I Met Your Mother. What was that experience like for you? Well, it was just really fun. You know, I played Billy the little karate boy. <laughs> but, um, you know that um, I, I take Taekwondo lessons now, but back then I didn't. I had never taken a lesson before, so it was really cool for me to be in, like, this um, junior black belt um, uniform kind of thing. And it was, like, my first time, so that was really fun. And it was also fun because I even got to work with Marilyn Ackerman, who now has her own show, Trophy Wife, on ABC. But, yeah, it's really fun, though. That's terrific. Now, if you could guest star in any other TV show, what show would it be? Well, I would say Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because, you know, I love Marvel. You stand right here. <laughs> you know, maybe I could be a superhero or some sort of a younger version of the superhero, like Thor or Captain America or something like that. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> definitely. I would love to see you on that. I could definitely picture that, and I hope to see it soon. Yeah, I could be on there with super strength lifting a car. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I hope to see that soon. Now, you've done a lot yeah. of work with web series such as RCVR and Super Moms. What was it like for you working on both those web series? Well, Super was really cool because it was like shooting a sci fi movie with alien abductions. So it was like my first time shooting a, uh, like a uh, science fiction thing, and that was really awesome. And um, it, it was also really cool because it was my first time shooting a web series. <laughs> and yeah, I got to work on Super Moms, too. I got to be the son of a superhero mom. <laughs> yeah, and I was shooting a TV show because everyone, everyone was really nice to me, and they treated with me with so much respect, and it was really fun. That's magnificent, and one thing I find so incredible about you is how versatile you are as an actor. I mean, you do so amazing in both voiceovers, on TV, as well as web series, so we really always love and enjoy watching your works. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, you also star as Adam in the short film Sunchild. Can you tell us more about the upcoming film? Yeah, yeah. Adam is an autistic 10-year-old boy, and He's a really smart kid, which makes them kind of awesome. <laughs> but um, one night, he can't sleep, so he goes and watches TV, and he witnesses something kind of bad. And he internalizes the pain he witnesses and mirrors the tragedy, kind of. So, and it's directed by Dahlia Alley, and she's so nice. <laughs> I just want to say that. And it'll premiere at some big festivals in the fall of 2014, so I'll be watching Definitely, you have a lot of exciting projects that I know we all can't wait to see, and that's a very unique story. I look forward to seeing Sunchild. Yeah, yeah, Sunchild is really emotional. Definitely. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good film. Definitely, I can tell. Now, you've recently landed a guest role on ABC's The Goldbergs. Congrats, by the way. What was your reaction Thank like you. when you found out you got the role? Well, my reaction was really excited and shocked because I saw the show once and I thought it was hilarious. So I love the show and it's really awesome being on it. So that was pretty cool. And I got to work with Sean Jambroni who plays Adam Goldberg and he was super nice. He always cared for me, asked me if I needed anything. He was such a really nice guy and it was really fun working on set. That's excellent. Terrific. Now, with Halloween right around the corner, do you have any plans for the fun holiday? Yeah, yeah. You know, we can always go trick-or-treating and stuff <laughs> like that, but I'm actually doing a little bit more. I got a Halloween competition at my school going on, so, you know, I have to dress up as the scariest thing ever. <laughs> and, um... Hope you have a very happy Halloween and spooktacular Halloween. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, lastly, if you could bring out one message to all your fans, what message would that be? First of all, I would say to all the fans, thank you so much for your support, and I would also say stick with your dreams and never give up. Magnificent. Well, thank you so much, Jacob, for speaking with me today. I truly enjoyed chatting with you, and I wish you continued success with your career. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. 
And everyone, make sure you tune in and catch Jacob Hopkins in Lifetime's Missing at 17, which premieres on October 19th. Thanks again, Jacob. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Well, it's fun. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. You're welcome.